This time last year, you had a list of things you wanted to achieve in 2023. <laughs> Too bad if you didn't get started. Hello and Happy New Year, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand. So on to 2024, another year closer to the return of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, if you're hoping for his return in the next 12 months, bad news for you, it's not happening. Look, I don't have inside information, only the Bible is my source, and it clearly states that events must happen before the return of Jesus. So all I can say is, get ready, be prepared for when it happens, because you won't want to miss it. Several events need to happen, like the seven-year reign of the Antichrist. Now, we're witnessing the pathway being made by governments in the world to ensure a one-world government will be in place for him. We're going to see a change in the world's religion. We'll see the mark of the beast. And, of course, there's the small matter of a third temple being built in Jerusalem. Well, the good news is that we're getting there, slowly, but what are you doing towards it all? Matthew 28 clearly says that we, that's you and I, have work to do. And that work is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to teach them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us. Look, I know what you're feeling. I hear it from my own church leaders when you know, they talk about that horrible word evangelism. No one feels comfortable and the excuses roll out. So if it helps... Read this set of scriptures again, especially the bit where even the apostles themselves weren't quite on board. In verse 17 of Matthew 28, we read that some had doubts. Now, even with Jesus in front of them, they had doubts. Well, how about you? Is your reluctance to go tell people about Jesus based on doubt? For centuries, there's always been questions raised about the resurrection, and they'll continue but unless we accept the resurrection account to be true, then I think you may have missed the point of the crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus and Christianity altogether. You know, to me, there is no doubt in my mind because the biblical record and eyewitness accounts from historians at the time confirm each other. To be honest, I've never noticed those three words when reading this passage. But some doubted. Well, there he was, standing in all his glory as a resurrected Jesus Christ. Now, pinch me. I must be dreaming. This is too good to be true. Oh, man, look, no one's going to believe this. You know, even 2,000 years later, that reaction is still prevalent. <laughs> I'm often ridiculed as people will scoff at the idea that I should worship an unseen God, or, as some like to refer him, to my sky daddy. So here's the problem for today's Christians. Now, we didn't see the resurrection, the rolled away stone. There's no physical evidence, no video, just the words written by historians. And yet the world perpetuates and accepts without a doubt the concept without proof then celebrates a man who never existed in an imaginary fable of Santa Claus. Now, if there's anything ever to doubt, here it is. Where's the proof that Santa lives? Maybe the spirit of giving, but the man himself, Santa, who stands in front of you every year, you know he's not real, and yet you're happy to continue the lie. But here was Jesus standing in front of his disciples, and some, they doubted. But is this correct if we investigate the Greek word distazo properly? Now, I'm one of these people who doesn't get into um, the Greek and you know, what that says and what it doesn't say, because it's just confusing. But Carl Bloomberg's commentary on Matthew suggests that the word distazo refers more to hesitation than to unbelief. Think the Apostle Thomas and his reaction to a resurrected Jesus. But whatever it is that's holding us back from preaching the good news of the gospel, we need to put it to one side. Yep, people may seem indifferent to the message, but I keep coming back to a friend of ours. She was a woman who, obviously, oddly enough, once found Jesus. And she went back to her Christian friends and asked, Why? Why didn't you tell me about Jesus earlier? But when it comes to the return of Jesus, we must be ready. And this is what I'm recommending for you for 2024. Get ready. 
get rid of the doubts, the hesitation. Be prepared. You don't want to miss out. So tell, share the gospel with someone today. Look, it can even be a member of your own family, your children, your parents, grandparents. Ah, look, we cannot and should not deny them the truth about their future. We shouldn't be hesitant to leave any doubts in their minds. But leave, let me leave you with no doubt, is what Jesus said to his disciples about what they should be doing. Matthew twenty-eight eighteen onwards says, All authority in heaven. Did you get that? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you to do. And surely, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So let's make it our goal to go talk to someone, anyone about Jesus each week. And there you've got it. 52 souls may have been saved because you had no doubt, no hesitation about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As always, happy to have you share this podcast, subscribe or leave your comments.